Hello children this is Mrs Hari Priya from Pon Vidyashram I welcome you all to the socialism in Europe and the Russian revolution part 3 In the previous video we had seen what is Russian empire what are the economical conditions of the society and how socialism work outs in the Russia and also the 1905 revolution In this video now we are going to see what are the first world war and the effects of the first world war how the february revolution happened and also the effects of the february revolution let us start our session the first world war and the russian empire in 1914 the war broke out between two european alliances the germany austria and turkey were the central powers and france britain and russia were the alliances The war was initially popular and people rallied around Tsar Nicholas II but the Tsar refused to cancel the main parties in the Duma when the war was continued this led to the reduced support for the Tsar so then how the russian army is defeated the war on the eastern front was different from the war on the western front the armies fought from trenches along the eastern fronts in the west on the other hand armies moved a good deal on the east and fought the battles the casualties were high on the eastern front the russian armies lost badly in germany and austria between the years of 1914 and 1917 By 1917 over 7 million people died in the battle the retreating russian army destroyed all the crops and buildings the destruction of the crops and buildings resulted in 3 million refugees in russia the development tarnished the image of tsar so the soldiers did not wish to fight such a war it also affects the industries so then industry was also affected by the war the german control of the baltic sea resulted in the supplies being cut off to russia so the industrial equipment disintegrated more rapidly in russia than anywhere else in the europe so the railway lines began to break down there was shortage of the labor because the able bodied men had been called for the war duty this led to small workshop being shut and resulted in a shortage of essential items large supplies of grains were sent to feed the army riots at the bread shops were a common problem here the february revolution in petrograd In the winter of 1917 conditions in the capital Petrograd were grim food shortages were severe in the workers quarters the winter was very cold accompanied by frost and heavy snow the february revolution on 22nd february a lockout took place at a factory on the right bank of the neva river On the next day workers in 50 factories went on strike to show their solidarity women led the way to strikes in many factories the demonstrators crossed from the factory quarters to the center of the capital the movement was not being actively organized by any political party The government imposed a curfew and the demonstrators dispersed by the evening but they came back on the 24th and 25th of February the cavalry and the police were called to keep a watch on the demonstrators the government suspended the duma on 25th February demonstrators returned in large number to the streets of the left bank on the 26th February the police headquarters were ransacked on the 27th February the government once again called out the cavalry to control the situation 
but the cavalry refused to fire on the demonstrators. An officer of a regiment was shot out and three other regiments mutinied to join the striking workers. By the evening of 27th February, soldiers and striking workers gathered to form a Soviet or council in the same building as the Duma met. This was the Petrograd Soviet. A delegation went to see the Tsar on 28th February. The Tsar abdicted on 2nd March on the advice of the military. A provincial government was formed by the Soviet leaders and the Duma leaders. Thus, the February Revolution of 1917 brought down the monarchy in Russia. The people include the parliamentarians, the workers, the women, the soldiers and all the military commanders joined to bring down the monarchy in Russia during the February Revolution. So, after February, what happened? The provincial government took steps towards an elected government. The restrictions on public meetings and associations were removed. Soviets were set up everywhere, though no common system of election was formed. Return of Lenin the Bolshevik leader Vladimir Lenin returned from exile in April 1970. He made land to the peasants and nationalization of banks. He proposed renaming of the Bolshevik party as the Communist Party to indicate its new radical aims. Most others in the Bolshevik party thought that the time was not ripe for socialist revolution. They wanted the provincial government to continue for some time, but various developments in the subsequent months changed their mindset. The workers' movement spread through the summer. Trade unions grew in number in industrial areas. Soldiers' committees were formed in the army. In the month of June, about 500 Soviets sent representatives to an all-Russian Congress of Soviets. The provisional government viewed these developments as an erosion in its power and as growing influence of the Bolshevik. The provisional government decided to take stern measures. The demonstrations by the Bolsheviks in July 1917 were sternly repressed. Many Bolshevik leaders had to go hiding. Many of them fled as well. The peasants and their socialist revolutionary leaders demanded a redistribution of land. The peasants seized the land between July and September 1917. This is one of the pictures of the Soviet meeting of Petrograd. Till this, I end up my session, my dear children, and in the next video, we will see about the October Revolution. Thank you, children.